So we're going to make a response to this artist here, John Shaw, um, and he works in um, watercolour and in fine liner. And the first thing I'm going to do is make a decision about what my colour palette's going to be. So um, he often uses a couple of colours in his colour palette. So um, this one here is almost like a yellowy, kind of yellowy background, um, and then uses these blues, blues and sort of bluey greens in the foreground. And then this one you can see has got kind of a, a pinky reddy background with a yellow foreground with just a hint of green there. And here we've got another kind of bluey green one on and off, on and off white sort of yellow background. So I think I'm going to choose this. I think I'm, I mean, I could make it my own colour palette, but I think I'm going to go for this one. I think I'm going to go for kind of a yellowy, yellowy background, maybe something a bit more orangey and then a blue kind of foreground. Now, the only thing I've done before starting this video um, is that I've got my reference photograph. So this is the photograph that I'm going to be drawing from. Uh, I've got my reference photograph and I've just traced off the main outlines of this bird um, and of the branch that he's sitting on. The reason why I've traced it is because we've already proved that we can draw um, in the pencil drawing and the colour pencil drawing. So we haven't got anything to prove in that sense. Um, and the skill in this, um, in this kind of piece of work is the watercolour. So I've traced it off for speed um, and then we can just concentrate on the watercolour. So when you've got watercolours, you've got the lid and then you've got the palette. We're going to be mixing colours on the lid um, and then uh, use then obviously the palette to pick up the colour. So here is my palette, hopefully it's just about in shot, and there's my lid. So the first thing I'm going to do um, is take my paintbrush and I'm going to start with the background first. So I'm just going to get some water and I'm going to wet all of the background. So it's just literally water in the background of this bird. The reason why I'm wetting the paper first is that it will stop you from um, having stripy marks in the background because that water will kind of bleed, that sort of watercolour, sorry, will bleed into the water and, and it will be quite soft rather than being like a harsh stripy line. So it doesn't have to be drenched, but it just needs to be a little bit wet. So I'm doing this anywhere where the bird isn't, but you don't have to be too neat. There we go. I've wet all my paper in about a square. Um, and then I'm going to kind of mix a yellow, mix a yellowy kind of orange colour here. That's going to be my background colour. And then just drop that in. So you can see because the paper's already wet, um, it's not going stripey. I can just drop that in. Wiggle it around a little bit. Give me a soft background so I'm not working against a white background. Okay, so now that I've got my kind of background in my orangey yellow colour, I'm just going to let that dry. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do um, once the background is dry is I'm going to do these kind of um, ink splash or watercolour kind of splash areas, these blue-green areas on top. So I've got my reference picture just in front of me all the time. Um, I'm just going to take some water from my water pot, put it on the palette and then mix my blues in until I get a colour that I'm happy with. I want the colour to be a lot stronger um, than the background colour, so I'm kind of rubbing, rubbing the palette more with my paintbrush to pick up a bit more colour. I'm going to start again by putting water in the area that I want um, that I want the ink splodge to be. So that was water, but it got a bit of the blue ink in still, and then I can drop the blue ink in, blue watercolour kind of in. Let that bleed out. Trying to, trying to let it kind of puddle naturally. And 
and I might just hold my brush over the top and give it a look tap to get some smaller splodges. And the artist uses these rectangles in places, so I might just pop a rectangle down here with the tip of my brush. Standing up to see whether I think that's enough blue. Might go for a bit more green in places. Right then, I'm just going to leave that there and let that dry. Once those um, those bits are dry, I'm just going to add the colour onto the bird itself. So I'm going to have a little look at my reference photo. I am going to leave the paint quite loose. I'm not going to do it really accurate, but I am going to put more blue in the head, more kind of orangey yellow here, and more uh, more of the blue down there, um, just so that so that the colours are sort of in the right place for the bird that I'm drawing. So. I'm using the tip of my brush this time to get a more kind of feathery, feathery effect. I'm adding a little bit more colour to a couple of these bits that are a bit um, still slightly damp, gone a bit pale since they dried. Right, my painting is still wet, um, but the next thing, the next thing you want to do when it is dry, 
is these little dots here. Um, he has the dots all over his work. He's got them in this piece. He's got them in this piece um, and in this piece too. So the way I'm going to do that is um, I'm going to use actually the end of my paintbrush rather than the, the bristles. And I'm just going to dip my paintbrush in the water and then I'm going to dip it in this um, palette and just give it a little rub. And hopefully, as long as I haven't used too much water, that should give me a dot. Yeah, it did. So I can do that again. Again. Trying to keep them in a bit of a grid in the way he does. Um, and then on each row I'm doing one less. So hopefully they kind of fade out. I think they look a bit weird actually starting from there. I might carry in them onto the end of the page. I think that looks a bit better. So it's important that we did the watercolour before the um, fine liner because the school fine liners aren't waterproof. Um, so if you um, paint um, after you've done the fine liner, then the fine liner will run and bleed. Um, so it's really important that before you go and do the fine liner that you make sure that your painting is dry. So I've um, I've got my painting here. It is dry because I've left it a couple of days. Um, I've got my reference photo and I've got the artist's work here. So I've kind of got them both to be looking at while I'm drawing. I usually start um, when I'm drawing a fine line liner with the darkest areas. So I would start with the eye first um, because it's kind of, you know, like a solid black. Um, and then I'd add some of the other details. Sorry, the light's a bit dodgy in here because it's a really sunny day. So you'll see that some of my picture looks, it's kind of in the light and some of it's not, but I can't, I can't do a lot about that really. So steady easy, I'll do the eye first, I'll make sure I leave that little reflection line. Um, and then here with the beak. I'll kind of put some darker bits in. And here. Now I am not doing an outline around this bird and that's really important. Some people will be really tempted to outline the areas. And you'll see I'm not outlining and I'm not using like solid lines. My lines are broken. So I'll do like a bit of a line and then let it kind of fade out and then do another bit of a line. Um, and it will just look a bit more natural. So I'm, I'm making quite short marks in lots of areas. Before you do this drawing and fine liner, if you want to um, try out kind of drawing the bird on a spare piece of paper, that's absolutely fine. It's no rush, like if that makes you feel more comfortable and you'll sort of feel happier working on top of your, um, on top of your watercolour, then you can do that. Also, if you want me to photocopy your watercolour background so that you can practice on a photocopy first, you can do that. If you've got your own fine, fine liners, you might find that they're actually better than these ones. So my fine, fine liners at home, I've got like a variety of thicknesses. I am using the school one. So this is the school one. 
but then I've got kind of ones that are different thicknesses. It's almost like this one's 0 0.7, which is a thicker nib, and then this one's 0 0.1, which is a thinner nib. So if you've got a selection of them thicknesses of nibs, that would be even better. 